I'm Sarah Dance. I'm a professor of data assimilation at the University of Reading. And I'm also principal investigator of the DARE project, which is the data assimilation for the Resilient City project. I'm Joanne Waller, and I'm a senior scientist in the assimilation of surface-based observations group at the Met Office. Prior to joining the Met Office, I worked as a postdoc at the University of Reading. I worked on a number of projects, including the data assimilation for the Resilient City project. During this project, my research focused on correlated observation errors. I'm Guan Nanzi. I'm a postdoctoral research assistant at the University of Reading. I joined the DARE project in 2020. My research follows on from Joe Waller's work on correlated observation errors. With climate change, we're expecting to have more intense and frequent hazardous weather events, like intense rainfall that maybe leads to a flash flood. And weather forecasts are an important tool in improving our resilience to such events. If we can get a good forecast in good time, then that gives people enough time to take mitigating actions before the event happens. We also need those forecasts to be trusted by the decision makers who are making decisions on the basis of the forecast. So that means they need to be accurate and be verifiably accurate using observations of the event. So one way to get forecasts really accurate is to use data assimilation where we combine information from observations together with information from pre previous forecasts together in an optimal way using sophisticated mathematics where we weight the observations on the one hand and the forecast information on the other hand by our confidence in them. So we fit more closely to the observations where we're more confident in the observations and we fit more closely to the model data where we're more confident in the model data. And we use that better estimate of the current state of the atmosphere to drive forward the next forecast. And that's been shown over a number of years that that really improves forecast accuracy. We make lots of observations of the atmosphere for numerical weather prediction, and none of them are perfect. And these errors come in because we have instruments that have a certain precision, and they might not measure perfectly either. And also, there are lots of processes during the data assimilation system that mean extra errors can be introduced. When these observations have errors that are similar, then you get correlated observation errors. Now, in the past, we've only used very simple types of estimates of observation error statistics. And in the DARE project, one of the things we've been working on is trying to make those estimates of observational uncertainty more sophisticated to improve the use of observations and to actually enable more observations to be used because one of the key issues currently is that lots of, lots of observations are just discarded because we don't understand the observational uncertainty characteristics well enough. Typically in our operational data assimilation systems, we use only about 5% of our data um, for assimilation. However, if we try to include these observation error correlations, it can be very computationally costly, which can make the production of the forecast very slow. And a late forecast is no good for anybody. Practical data assimilation is time constrained. You have to wait for the observation to be collected and arrive at the computing center. Then you have to get the assimilation done quickly so that forecast can arrive on time. You definitely don't want a forecast which is later than what had already happened. Our methods that take account of spatial correlations in the observation hours involves more computational work. Therefore, it's currently not feasible to use them with uh, a, real, a really big sources of observational data, such as geostationary satellite data in an operational system. In, in there, we, in principle, could assimilate millions of observations in just 15 minutes. So I have been investigating numerical techniques to speed our methods up and make them practical for operational use. In my research, I have been able to successfully demonstrate new methods in idealized systems that are fast and have good accuracy and may have potential to be used in operational data simulation systems.
The next step will be to refine the techniques I have developed and to collaborate with an operational center to test them out with real observational data and a more complex weather forecasting model. I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to the chance where I can bring uh, what I found in idealized system to, to operational system. Throughout our work on observational uncertainty, we've been lucky enough to collaborate with the UK Met Office and to have very useful discussions with other um, operational weather services such as the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts or ECMWF, which is up the road from our campus in Reading. And because of those discussions, we've been able to make sure that the sorts of mathematical algorithms and mathematical theory that we've been developing to improve our estimates and treatment of observation uncertainty in data simulation remain relevant and useful and feasible for the operational system. So some of our work is already being used in the operational system for weather radar data in the operational computing system. Providing more timely forecasts will allow individuals, emergency responders and local authorities to take mitigating action to protect against the impacts of hazardous weather, which allows us to build more resilient cities.